in the first three days of creation. And so on the first day, light is created. Um, it's not the sun that's created or the stars that are created, just light that is created. Um, next you have to the sky, and then we leave the terrestrial waters. And then on the third day, we have dry land, vegetation, and the lowest organic life forms. Now, on the subsequent three days, we have the things that are filling that space that was created. So on the fourth day, you have the um, luminaries, the, the greater light and the lesser light, and the stars all filling the space of light. And then you have fish and fowl being created. So you can see it matches directly with the sky and the waters being created. And then finally, you have the land creatures and humankind um, with being the highest form of organic life that you have for the, the priestly author there. And so you can see that the priestly author, with his concern for ritual and things being ordered and um, all, all those things that he has put into his story, his mythology, um, this type of order here. Now, I wanted to stop for a little uh, for a moment and sort of um, make the emphasis that what the priestly author here is doing is creating this creation story as opposed to the Babylonian stories. Um, there are many, many differences that you have between the Babylonian story and then the Genesis creation stories. Um, the primary difference is that there's no, there's no battle. There's no cosmic battle between gods to create these forces. Um, Yahweh, Elohim, is so powerful that um, this deity can just speak and um, there, these things are created. So there's no type of, um, there's no uh, battle that we have in these, these creation stories. So my next slide here is the universe according to Genesis. This is um, the literal interpretation of what is created from this first Genesis story. And so you can see here we have the waters above the firmament that we've got, and we've got floodgates for when the flood comes. And you see the stars and the moon and the sun and all of that are inside of this firmament. You've got the earth and then the terrestrial waters right here. And then you've got the abyssal deep, or the word Tiamat in the Hebrew there. And so this right here is what is created in the Genesis story, the first Genesis story. This is another artist's rendition of that Genesis story, what's created. And this type of cosmology is very similar to many of the different cosmologies that we sort of mentioned before, the influences um, that were uh, around the Hebrew people, uh, especially in many of the Egyptian um, uh, narratives that we have. We have this being covering, or a firmament covering the people and nurturing them. So the next thing is the second creation story. And in this creation story, it's more of what we for sure would consider a mythology. It's explaining things. It explains why we have knowledge. Um, and so when Adam and Eve eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, um, what they're doing there is, in, in Hebrew, when you put two opposing words right next to each other, um, what you're what's being done there is it's sort of trying to say that you have everything in between that comes along with those two, two extremes. So when they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what they're doing is they're gaining the knowledge of everything that is good all the way to evil, everything in between, the knowledge of everything. Uh, the next thing we have the explanation of why people die. Uh, when Adam and Eve were created in this Genesis story, they weren't to die. But as soon as they eat, ate from the tree, um, the punishment that they were given was death. Uh, the next thing we have is marriage. Why um, 
when a son leaves his father and mother, he goes off and goes goes off and cleaves to his wife. Um, pain in birth. Why is it painful that women, um, when they give birth, it's painful? Uh, we have the reason for agriculture, why people till the ground, and then also why snakes slither on the ground, why they don't have any legs. And so this, this creation story here is sort of explaining the world around the Yahwistic author, describing why these things are the way they are. So what I wanted to do now was sort of put this into a practical application. Um, we've been talking about all these ancient civilizations, and we've been looking how, at how they compare to each other, and, um, but why are we doing that? You know, why is CORE trying to teach us about um, these people 3,000 years ago? Well, we firmly believe, the faculty firmly believe in the CORE program that you know, these stories are forming our identity today. They have formed Western civilization, and they're informing who we are as a society, who we are as a people. And so what I wanted to do is sort of do a thought experiment and sort of go through what would happen if we sort of looked at this, looked at these stories in our modern context. So I'm going to go beyond Core 3's time period and look at our own time period and how these creation myths inform who we are today and inform our identity. Um, and these are just pictures uh, that people have put together. And it's just showing you that you know, even today, people are arguing about these stories and what they mean for us as a, as a civilization. Now, before we begin, though, um, I wanted to have one more quote there and show you that this debate has been going on for centuries. Um, and you can read the quote there, but basically what Augustine is saying is um, people who are using the Bible and rejecting what people observe in the world around them are making a laughing stock of Christianity. And so Augustine, writing in the fifth century, is even a part of this debate that we have um, now in our modern time. 